Hi there, and welcome to episode 119 of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I'm James Brown, the man who, according to public record, is a grower, not a shower. And I'm joined. Hang on a minute. Somebody's <laughs> fucking changed that script. <laughs> yeah, somebody's. That's been. Ooh. I'm James Brown, the man who, according to public record, is a grower, not a shower. And I'm joined by Dr. Alex Connor, who has no functional penis to speak of, and Mrs. ADHD, who wants. <laughs> said in a caravan at the v festival i you know what i'm not going to say it this is all wrong but this is public record and it did happen in a caravan at the v festival and that is going to create some chatter on discord alex hi i'm not sure that is public record if i'm honest it fucking is now isn't it? i've screwed that up i mean people in the caravan <laughs> knew <coughs> Sam, I, was, I was in that caravan i remember mm. hello alex Hi, hi Sam. Um, <laughs> so I reminded that we started the podcast because we really felt we needed a way for thousands of people to shout at us for being negative about a neurological disorder instead of instead of just saying that we should try turmeric, the Atkins diet, or acupuncture instead. So we did, and now we have even more time to do one on a Friday that used to be Thursday because. Um, because of the thing i don't know didn't write anything james thursday friday what day is it uh, it's, well now i don't know but it will be a friday so Tuesday. anyway this <clears throat> thanks sam this least favorite child that alex has of a podcast mm -hmm. is also a tragedy in three parts we'll discuss how the week between podcasts has been from our perspective as people with adhd i don't know why i did that and people involved <laughs> in the community and we'll answer your questions as usual um, whilst also expanding on the theme of ADHD and the bipolars. As always, I'll ask you to how your week was. Nobody will ask me, although let's face it, that never happens anymore. So Sam, mm. how was your week? Oh, I can't remember. Um, I think it's been all right. I can't remember. Can you? I um... there's, been, there's been the, the as we talked about on Monday, the probably PMDD related anger and other oh, yeah. issues. Oh, so you're over that now? Um, no, not over it, but you know, um, yeah. That's I... why we have a script really, Sam, so you can write in these thoughts beforehand. Yeah, I don't look at this. I don't look at that. Um, I'm back into making ear cuffs, really loving it at the minute. Oh, I, and actually I found, I've managed to sign back into my exercise, so I might actually start selling them again. I don't know. We said don't, we said don't promote it because you'll get 20 orders and then you haven't made them and then you, oh, you've screwed I that mean, up. I mean, I haven't put anything on the site. It might not ever happen. <laughs> don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Um, and I'm back into gardening again. When I say gardening, I just mean making holes in the lawn, loads yeah. of them. There's, the dog. dandelions won't stop coming. And I've got a new yeah. weed puller now because I broke the last one and it's really, yeah. really good. And I love it. Oh, it's arrived, has it? Have yeah. sent the last yeah. one back? Yes, James did it. No fucking way. I know. I I'm not joking. This is a genuine question. How? Um, it was, I'd ordered it on Amazon. I pressed. No, 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 no. I mean, back. I meant emotionally, James. Yeah, she, she how? Left it in the how car. did she you? Left it, she left it in the car. In my car. She left it in my car. And it was in the, in the way of the bit where my arm goes. So I thought I'll have to uh, take this because, yeah. 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 It's a great hack there. It's a great hack there. Just leave something somewhere that your yeah. partner has to deal with it, and they'll deal with it. Yeah, maybe. left it in James' if it's car, annoying. not mine. Yeah. yeah so clever. that that's good. Back into gardening again. Um. I can't think of anything else that's happened at all, ever. What about you, James? Jesus. I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, look at the joy on her face for doing that. So, um, yeah, still bad. You know, I am still really struggling with mental health. I'm not in that darkest of dark places, though. Um, I've had you know lots of support from you two and the lovely Jack and Eric, people checking in on me and making sure I'm okay. Does that make sense? So kind of still bad, but better? Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, the one, one thing is, uh, one frustrating thing is, uh, people may know, I don't know how much I talk about, my back's fucked. I broke it when I was 20. And 15 months ago, I had a series of injections and the surgeon said, if these injections work, we know exactly what we'll do and we'll do this operation, cut a bit of bone away. And then all cancellations got moved and, and cancelled, etc. And I went and saw the surgeon and they said, right, okay, so they work. So now we'll do a scan. And then after that scan, we'll do more injections. And after those injections, we'll know what to do. And I just thought, I thought we'd, we'd been through this. So that's, yeah, a bit frustrating. Anyway. Little yes. bit. Alex. 
Yeah, good. Slight overwhelm. I've signed up to too many projects again. So as you well know, James, I've, I've um, withdrawn slightly from one of the one of, one of the projects that just, I just wasn't able just to succeed in. Just withdraw from them all. Sting. Yeah, no, I can't can't because of the you get everything done. Um, the big course is going really, really well, and and oh. what I realised is that there there isn't really a, a proper ADHD coaching training that is frankly fit for purpose that I can see. So we're gonna oh. we're building one, aren't we, James? With some really good people, some prof professors of uh, clinical psychology and other things, and we're gonna build one. But we obviously we've got a, a date on it, and. Yeah, I owe people loads of work and it always makes me feel shitty about myself. But apart from that, pretty good. Um, what, well, as we always ask, and Sam would dearly like to answer it one day with, with the actual answer, what stupid thing have you been doing instead of what you were supposed to be doing? I'll start with you, James. <clears throat> and because I'm not kind of technically off work, it's what I'm supposed to be doing is, you know, recovering and trying to regain my physical and mental health. But I did some filming and I've, I've done a bit of filming with both of you two. And trying to get you two not to fuck up or get distracted by, you know, squirrel is really fucking hard thing. Yeah. So that that's it's it's more like managing your two's ADHD in, in the moment. Yes, it is. It is. What about you, Sam? Um I've written some things down, I think. Just not on the script. Yeah. Not on the script, no. I should okay. have, shouldn't I? Um, it would have helped. Oh, I forgot to say about my new friend. Oh, she's not my friend, though. Doesn't matter. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> yeah. I'll save that. I'll see what happens yeah. next week. I might bring it up next week if she is my yeah. friend. Um, I've been, I've lost loads of stuff and haven't been able to find it anywhere. And then I realised that I, I went through a pegboard phase, didn't I? Where I wanted pegboards up everywhere. Mm. And I've got a pegboard up here and I've got loads of stuff on it and then completely forgot that this whole wall existed. Yeah. And the other day, I noticed it again and found loads of my stuff. So that was really good. That really um, is good. I know. And I, I set up a meeting with my line manager and the other two people that I work with so that we could all have a big chat and then obviously completely forgot about the meeting. And then 20 minutes into the 30 minute meeting, my line manager sent me an email saying, are you coming to this meeting that oh, you set God. up? And I was like, oh, so then, yeah, joined quite late and missed oh, it horrible. all. I know, I know. But I do stuff like that all the time. It's fine. What about you, Alex? This doesn't seem like a big thing, ding, ding. But you know when you do, you know, like the self hatred and self loathing that comes with yeah. ADHD. I got a, a, a Samsung phone. It's an S10 Plus. It's called. It's big. Ooh, show off. And then I know it's second hand. <laughs> it's like eighty quid. I don't know. And and I because I, I drop and break everything i've got this like super big case that comes with its own screen thing i know this is boring but bear with me yeah and it's all scratched and crap so I thought, i'll just buy a new one and so because i live in germany i haven't got amazon prime wi-fi so I, I check it and i go okay that's definitely the one it's the s10 plus right thing S send it send it to lisa say can you order that for me i'm at amazon prime and it comes and and it doesn't have a screen. I just got the wrong one, obviously. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. And I've ripped the case open to get it out. So I can't even really... Can you send that back? I don't know whether you yeah, can or not. Yeah, you can. So, so I was I just embarrassed and ashamed and, like, I've done it again today. And so I thought, okay, I'll concentrate. I'll put S10 plus case, huller in German, with, with the thing. And I looked at it. It's exactly the same as the one I've got with the actual plastic covering. It was the one they said, oh, you should buy this one, you know, sponsored or whatever. So I'm really excited. I can see it's right. And I double check that it's got the thing. It's more expensive because it's posh. And so I send it to Lisa and I buy that one. And the, it, the, the plus had been taken off it, so it was too small. It's not for my phone. And I'd ripped that open. <laughs> and I hated myself. Like, just like, I can't, like, to not be able to function at, at that, that is a really basic thing. And somebody I want to speak to and asked to speak to left me a voicemail the same day on Friday, this was. And I can't listen to it. No, I can't. And I don't know why I can't press listen. And I feel sick. I felt sick all weekend about all of these three things. Like, and I don't know if that's a low mood or if it's just ADHD or I mean, it, I need I need to do some self coaching with that. 
I think it reflects that I'm a bit overwhelmed, but three little tiny fucker, like not important things make you feel like a turd. Thanks for that both. We're going to take a break and we'll be back in part two with questions and thoughts from the ADHD adult UK community. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Okay, coming back in one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, Fuck off, seven. come on. Welcome back to episode 119 of the ADHD Adults. Oh my word, part three, as always, where people don't realise Sam is the actual fucking devil. But she seems what? so nice, but he's a monster. As always, in part three of our extra special Thursday episode that's on a Friday now or something, we're taking questions from our lovely ADHD community. Typically, we answer them from uh, Discord. Hello, all Discord, uh, the ADHD adults. But you can also contact us at the ADHD adults on the Instagrams or Twitter or any of the other ones as well, the names of which escape me. I'm going to read out the first question, um, which is from Sam, not Mrs. ADHD. We've had a question from before. And it is, the other day, I thought, what a rubbish witness I'd make. And how glad I was I'd never been called for jury duty because I don't think I could take it. I like the idea that she thinks jury duty is made up of witnesses to the crime. Anywho, that made me wonder, since ADHD is legally recognised as a disability, what adjustments, if any, can people with ADHD get if they need to appear in court? This goes for witnesses, jury duty defendants, which pisses over what I just said, so clearly they're two separate <laughs> things. Uh, <laughs> damn it, Mrs. Uh, not Sam, not Mrs. ADHD. <laughs> Sam? Oh, um... Uh... Yeah. I've always wanted, I was sorry, I was distracted by the thought that I've always oh. wanted to be on jury du duty. Me too. I love that. Apart from, my, well, I won't go into it, but my friend, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I'll tell you another time. Remind me to, though, because I'll forget. And it's a really Is it a really story. horrendous <laughs> crime you realised isn't palatable for this? No, it's just a, a longish story and we don't have time for it today. No. It was a friend that was on jury duty for a murder case. But you're telling it anyway, apparently. Tell yeah, it tell it anyway. Um, yeah, you can get help. You can, um, and you can get um, an ad advocate. Are they advocate, yeah. I was getting confused then by advocar, but it yeah, is an advocate. You can definitely it? get that. <laughs> they hand it out. The foreman, the foreman comes around, and you can either have that or you can have Malibu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can get help. I can't remember exactly what help. James, can you? It's eggnog, isn't it, James? It, it is, yeah, it, it is. Uh, or snowball, which has had the car in it. If you have a disability, um, which can include a physical or mental health condition, courts can make reasonable adjustments to help you if you are serving on a jury and you get the opportunity um, to request adjustments when you are summoned for this. And, and in general, obviously, reasonable adjustments, a little bit like in the workplace, it does require you to work out what you need. And for us, that is hard, ding. But if you genuinely think that your inattentiveness and inability to sit still is going to make you an inappropriate um, juror, then I imagine you can state that and then it would be up to the um, criminal justice system, CPS, et cetera, to, to work that out. It's a great question. They'd Alex, probably withdraw add? you, I would have thought. What I will add is, is, is James, we get asked all the time, probably you as well, Sam, don't we? Oh, what, what, what adjustments shall I get from work? And there's literally no answer to that question. It, it's so individual. Yeah. It depends on the difficulties you're facing and what the potential solutions are. And, and frankly, are they reasonable? There isn't an answer, but people love answers to questions where there aren't any. I thought you said, and frankly. Anyway, question two, which is from the lovely Mama Chameleon, says, I've got a question about CBT. Is there a part of CBT which could be detrimental to people with ADHD? Yes. I had, okay, well, that's short then. <laughs> Question two, no. Carrying on, I had some CBT a year ago or so, and one of the mantras was follow the plan, not the mood, which is a good theory, <laughs> I thought, but just following the plan is not so simple with ADHD. Any thoughts? How can we use CBT realistically, so for those that aren't aware, cognitive behavioral therapy, to get something positive from it? without expecting too much. And then a little final question, which character from what we do in the shadows does James most resonate with? Let's deal with the CBT first, Alex. Have you tried a planner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we've talked about CBT before. It's an absolute pe pegging nightmare. If you haven't got a CBT specialist that is 
sensitive to either ADHD or or you holistically as a person. So if the person with CBT doesn't understand ADHD at all, but they're prepared to listen to what you're saying you can and can't do without judgment, it's fine. But it's fucking rare as rocking horse shit, frankly. If they understand ADHD and not just their own ADHD or the one that, you know that, that they're familiar with, I mean, in general, then that whole follow the plan thing only is just out there has to go out the window mm. because what you need is a plan that's going to be effective not that you think is going to be effective it requires a lot of analysis of what has happened before with you what when you were successful and what the processes involved were and when you don't follow the plan that you both agreed and you were in the cbt absolutely 100 convinced you definitely would do and you just didn't and you feel like shit about it the a good cbt therapist will use that only as an advisor it just tells you about yourself it doesn't judge you it doesn't and it helps you figure out what you can and can't do but again that's really really unusually rare sam you've had cbt i believe i have and and i i think i'm probably one of the few because there's not a lot of evidence for cbt is there Really, low quality yeah for adhd and cbt yeah no. um but i actually found it really useful but then i fucking love admin i'm one of those rare people admin's my job and i love filling out forms and i love all that shit so wow. cbt worked really well for me because i love doing all the homework i'm one of those rare people that that loves it and i like kind of simple things where I ask myself a question and I've got a sheet and I go through these steps and ask myself questions and realize that all the stuff I've got in my mind is just complete bollocks. So it works really well for me, but I instantly forget it after I've finished the course. So I have to mm. keep doing it again. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I generally, I think for people, there's, there's lots of people anecdotally, I think, that say that it works for them, but there's lots of people that say that it really doesn't. It's one of those things like, I don't know, fish eggs or golden orbs or long I, mean, I, don't, or I don't know what any what any of that is what is she saying what are the last I three things I don't, <laughs> I don't i don't know i'm going to move on before she explains it um just just to again to clarify if you look at the national institute for clinical health and excellence or nice guidelines cbt nice. is the only other thing it recommend recommends mm. really on top of recommends on top of medication but it says if you look at the evidence the document that says this is the evidence behind our decision it says pretty much all the evidence is low quality so that's poorly designed or poorly reported studies and to answer the other question clearly laszlo the character from colin definitely you are oh, without a shadow of doubt not laszlo D what that i'm not you bastards you're colin Colin bastards. Is it Robertson or Robinson? Robinson. 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 Colin Robinson. Robinson. The energy vamp. The energy vampire. Yep. Yeah. That's you. So, in yeah. answer to your question, Mama Chameleon, he's Colin Robinson. No question Although about he it. Although he thinks he's Laszlo, because he's he does, got yeah. It's like he thinks he's either. Derek Bowie <laughs> when he's actually <laughs> John. Anyway, Martin question three is from Fenia the Prowler. Hi guys, I was a police officer for five years, and should I have read the name out? And didn't get, get didn't go to get diagnosed until I left. I was fine. They've left. Um, I was too worried what effect it would have when applying for other roles, and also the. I also don't. Sorry, Sam. I yeah, don't, I don't think, think their actual is, surname is the <laughs> Prowler. <laughs> Fenria T Prowler was the name on there. On oh, it's badge. Fenria. I said yes. Fenria. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Fenria the Prowler. Hi guys, I was a police officer for five years and didn't go to get diagnosed until I left. I was too worried what effect it would have when applying for other roles and also there weren't any adjustments they could reasonably make. For example, no one else can help you with paperwork, nobody can ensure your statements are all in chronological order, etc. The issue is that everything is on record in the police. For example, I had back pain as a 50 kilogram woman wearing all the kit up top, the kit caused the pain, so I requested a hip belt instead. I was told if I got a hip belt, it would go on record and I would possibly be rejected from applying from the dog section as unfit. So I struggled on with back pain as it was my dream at the time to join the dog section. Is this person the, a dog? The job attracts people who say they get bored easily. And I now recognize potentially undiagnosed mm. ADHD in quite a few ex-colleagues. 
then can I, I don't think they're one? a dog. I don't think dogs no. can type. Pretty, Go on, James, take it. Yeah, to answer that, to answer that question, they're almost certainly not a dog. This this is a really important point slash question is that there are lots of different professions, including healthcare professions, emergency services, where people are definitely, and we know this because they've contacted us, afraid to declare that they've got ADHD and therefore cannot access reasonable adjustments because they think either it will stop them from getting a promotion in the future or somehow mark their card, or in the case of healthcare professionals, they'll have to go in front of a fitness to practice board and prove that they are fit to practice, even though they have been for 10 to 20 years and now they'll probably be better now they're diagnosed. And it's, yep. it's a real problem. It's something we are going to start campaigning on. As the, well, the charity who we support are going to start campaigning on because people should be able to, in any situation, say... I, I need support. I, anecdotally, we were contacted by somebody who was a commercial pilot who got diagnosed and was then told, give us your license back. You can't fly yep. if you've got ADHD. And their entire career ended because they got a diagnosis and support. So it's a really important thing and lots of people go through it. So there isn't an answer other than hopefully in the future, employers in those sectors will start to accept that once you are diagnosed and supported, you will likely be more effective at your job. And it's really insidious, isn't it? Because even if there's things they are supposed to do and shouldn't affect you negatively, we hear anecdotally that they do. So what they're supposed to do, they're often doing the opposite and discriminating, which is is literally illegal and is rife anyway. Uh, not not illegal in all, not illegal if you're in the military. Mm, no, example. no. But even in 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 our in regular people jobs, it's it, we do, you get discriminated against, and if you try and do something, you know, if you claim constructive dismissal, it's a court case you can't afford. Yeah, um, I th I think as well talk, talking about the military, we get so we get people from all sorts of jobs and and professions contacting us all the time, and and there's this. It's like you were saying about fitness to practice and things like this. It's so in the, the when I brought up the military, we had somebody contact us recently um, that thinks they have ADHD and would benefit from a diagnosis and treatment. Um, you can't join the military if you have um, an ADHD diagnosis. Oh, no, if you've displayed ADHD symptoms or have taken medication, I think in the past two years, but I can't remember. And they... Um, they wanted to go for diagnosis, but couldn't get one through the NHS because the military has their own their own health system. But that health system wouldn't diagnose them unless they were diagnosed as a child. And they don't recognise ADHD wow. and as an adult being a problem. But yet they won't take anybody on that's oh. been medicated or has symptoms for the past two years, which seems a bit. So they, they're going to have to pay privately, which is a nightmare. But also there's, there's certain professions, like you were saying about with the helicopter licence, um, there's also certain like technical things that you have to have a license for if you were doing I don't want to say the thing because mm. it will out them but if you've got to have a safety critical medical every year and yep. you you think that if you tell them you've got ADHD or you get diagnosed or treated for ADHD, you will lose your job, even though you're doing your job well now and you think you'd be able to do it even better if you got diagnosed yep. and treated. You daren't tell them for, because you'll be at risk at losing your job. And that's something, it's... like you say, that we need to help to change. So frustrating. It really is. Uh, it, this is highlighted in pink and black. I don't know who does it. So we'll take a break now. We'll be back in part three. More thoughts on this week's theme and Monday's podcast. See you in a bit. Welcome back to episode 119 of the ADHD Adults podcast, where we're talking about ADHD and bipolar disorder. This is part three, where we will talk about something. James, mm -hmm. what made you choose the last idea for a theme? Flawless. Um, my, yeah, it was. Um, obviously, we get we get asked for lots of. I think we've got three hundred and twenty eight um, episode requests in, which probably is probably more than that. Yeah, which is which is good, but obviously, quite a few of them have been related to bipolar disorders and my cyclothymia, which I'm now happy with the diagnosis after Monday's episode and the script guys. Uh, I, I'm not going to say Alex is the script guys psychoeducation, which Alex delivered all right, I suppose. Um, made me realize it's something that's really important and i thought we'd done it but we'd done mood disorders not bipolar um and i think actually now we need to go we need to go we do need to go through all those other mood disorders and we are we will start 
you know, next Monday. The, I'm sure the script has already started on <laughs> PFDD. There's um, no way I'm... he could have. During the podcast. <laughs> they, oh, they don't listen. Sorry. Yeah. Alex. Alex? Yeah? Are you going to say but... your, your bit? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I think... Fucking hell, are you doing I've... this on purpose? No, I copied and pasted from last week's script and forgot to change it. So I've answered the question to why we chose a week ago's thing. Um, we chose this because James told me we were going to. That's the honest answer. I had absolutely no uh, no input in this, but I've always been misdiagnosed as bipolar. But James thinks mm. I'm cyclothymic, which could, would make sense. Sam, say it, say it. I don't have any editorial input in this podcast at all. I didn't choose the theme or even look at the script before I turned up today. <laughs> Was there any thought or tip from the theme that you forgot to say, Alex? Um, just trust yourself, really. I don't. I think James touched on that, didn't he, um, on Mondays? But but if you know it isn't right, do trust that these feelings are real and 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 that it, 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 you're worth discussing them with with somebody that's that's it that's all I would say what about you Sam yeah I don't really have anything but that's a good one actually I think lots of people and I hear this people say this to me about ADHD diagnosis all the time I basically I don't think I'm worth it I don't yeah. think I'm worth getting a diagnosis and yeah absolutely yeah but uh, and like you always say Alex don't do it for you then do it for other people yeah. because you know you could improve other people's lives if mm. you improve you you know if you're a better functioning and you're in a better mood and have less anxiety what's that going to do for the people around you it's going to improve it so do it for them james i mean it hasn't improved your life me being diagnosed but you know that's an n equals one isn't it um in terms of anything I forgot to say that not really, but reiterating that you know yourself better than anybody else, even if they're a healthcare professional. If you genuinely can tell the difference between a dip and an extended, but you know, not permanent change in in mood, um, misdiagnoses happen all the time. You can point this out if you get to the point of a diagnosis. You can say, "Listen, I understand that ADHD symptoms and bipolar symptoms look similar, but I know the difference between my ADHD symptoms and." When I have a low or a, a hypomanic episode or or symptoms, try and record your mood as much as you can. And if you don't like spreadsheets, there are apps you can use to record symptoms and you can kind of use that. Put a reminder in your diary, ask a friend to remind you and remember it's temporary and getting somebody to help remind you that can be really helpful. Yeah, I think that's really nice. And even recording the conversations with doctors and other healthcare professionals as well is, is also really, really important because we forget and we get flustered and frustrated often when we are excited or feeling under pressure. That was jolly. <laughs> I, I really tempted to ask Sam a question that's emotionally important and then just shut it down like uh, <laughs> as a joke, but it, at the risk of making her literally kill me with a crazy muscly arms, I won't. That was episode 119 of the ADHD Adults. It was the very first Friday Extra Edition at this point in what is, I think, July, that used to be a Thursday, after Monday's episode on ADHD and bipolar. If you like this nonsense and want to get involved, please do contact us on the socials, especially James's Discord, uh, the ADHD Adults, or at the ADHD Adults on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and the other ones as well. Have a really lovely weekend. Goodbyes. See ya. Bye. Trigger warning, clacks on, clacks on, clacks on, clacks on, clacks on, big clacks on, no, 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 no. trigger warning, clacks on, clacks on, clacks on.